So do you want to know why Port Moody was the fifth most searched city in Canada in 2021? Stick around, we're going to hit all the sweet spots. What's up guys, that Agent Kelly here, here with my partner Jordan Parker. We manage Team Zubor and Associates out in Vancouver's metro area and today we're going to be walking you through Port Moody, letting you know all about the areas throughout the city if you're thinking about moving here and if you need somebody to chat to about moving here, you can scroll down and book yourself right into my calendar with that Calendly link. So I guess Jordan, do you want to start off by getting right into it? This is Rocky Point, this is the ocean right here. Surrounded by all of Port Moody across the way, we got beautiful Heritage Mountain, Ioko. We got Belcare and more on the other property on the backside there. We have two beautiful lakes. We got White Pine Beach. We also have Bunsen Lake. Great dog parks and walking trails there on the other side over here. Sudderbrook. Sudderbrook got all the towers there. Sudderbrook Village. Do you want to tell everybody like where Port Moody is located in relation to the rest of Vancouver's metro area? Yeah. Well, uh, Port Moody's part of the Tri-City. So we got Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam and Port Moody. And Port Moody is actually connected right to the Barnett Highway. It's an arm right off the shoulder of Port Moody. And Barnett Highway takes you right on and transforms into Hastings Street. Hastings Street is a vein artery right into downtown Vancouver. So if you get on the Barnett Highway right beside Port Moody here, it is a straight shot right to downtown Vancouver. It is a 37 minute sky train and it is a 34 minute drive. Okay, and then in relation to the Fraser Valley, which is uh, just outside of Vancouver's metro area, how far are we to maybe like the furthest point to the Fraser Valley? The Fraser Valley, I like to think of it as the border, right, obviously. Uh, it's 45 minutes. 45, that's Give to 45 probably minutes what? To, to like, Abbotsford, right. to the border, right from Port Moody, from your doorstep, 45 minutes. Okay, and then I guess before we get into like some areas you like and like the future growth of Port Moody and all that stuff, I guess you want to kind of gloss over the, the weather of Port Moody because I think most people that are thinking about moving to BC are likely doing it because of the weather, right? Yeah, that's actually a good point. I'm, I was born and raised in the Tri-Cities and one reason why I don't like Port Moody, actually the top, the, actually the only reason why, I, there's only one reason why I don't like Port Moody, honestly, maybe the traffic, but one reason I don't like Port Moody is the weather. Um, the opposite of Port Moody for the Lower Mainland uh, in the, is uh, Richmond, right? right? And Richmond they call sunny Richmond because it's sunny there a lot. And what it is is the weather patterns come off of the Pacific Ocean and they go over Richmond, they go over Burnaby, Coquitlam, and they kind of jam up against these North Shore Mountains right here. And on a day that it's kind of rainy here, it's generally sunny everywhere else. Right. So I found myself driving out to go, you know, downtown and stuff like that. But it's just, I'm solar powered. So doom and gloom and rain, it really can bug a person. So I would say the number one downside of Fort Moody is the weather actually. It rains quite The a bit. rain, right? Yeah. But I mean, overall, in terms of temperature. Oh, me, oh it does, I mean, it snows once a year. You get this once a year. Um, it's, it's really moderate because you got, we got a lot of water here, right? It's so. still some of the most mild weather that you could find probably worldwide. So I guess let's talk about like young families moving here. What neighborhoods should they be looking at? Ooh, well, Port Moody has a bougie kind of uh, price point to it. So you can really, you know, easily find those 1.5, 1.3. It's more expensive, I find, than the average Coquitlam home. It's more expensive than uh, Burn, uh, Port Coquitlam for sure. Port Moody kind of competes with Burnaby prices because of uh, the small petri dish of inventory that's available in Port Moody and all of the great amenities as well. But some great spots, if I was someone moving to Port Moody and I was from out of here, I would move into the Heritage Mountain area. They have a great community plan. It's just on the shoulder, kind of by the Barnett Highway there. It has great views down into the inlet here. If you have the cash flow, I would be just behind me here on along Ioko or up in the mountains I um, in Anmore. They got acreages up there. They got deer walking through their property and stuff like that. By Anmore, we're talking about, you know, probably what, like three million dollars? Three homes? million gated properties. I'm just letting, hey, letting people That's know. That's the place to be, right? That's the place to be. They, um, they actually have a petition going up there against monster homes. You got these signs saying no monster homes. Yeah. Cause there's some people building some serious homes just over here, but um, but uh, definitely Heritage Mountain is a great spot. Uh, College Park area there, that's where you're gonna find the sweet spot right now these days. That's in terms of affordability. Affordability for detached houses because of the densification with the two sky trains being added just recently over the last three, four years, five years. Um, a lot of the area now is uh, multifamily, so you're finding condos, townhouses and stuff like that. So you're not going to find a detached house 
uh, that's newer in the downtown Port Moody area, you're gonna have to find it in the surrounding areas. And College Park, they, they have like a, a whatchamacallit, uh, their plan, they're gonna have like 4,800 units or something like that added to that area. It's a massive community plan. You can see some of these pictures here. Um, they, they're gonna be having, right now there's no corner store. You cannot buy a pack of gum up in College Park. Um, so they're adding a lot of uh, stuff to the community up there and a uh, really, really great plan for sure. Okay, and then I guess, so okay, so those are two good neighborhoods, College Park and uh, what's it, Heritage Mountain? Yeah, but uh, I mean, let's say you're a younger person moving here, right? Um, right now they have this development coming, it's called the TOD, Transit Orientated Development. Right now, because of the, the train tracks, the CNN train tracks, the rail tracks that go through Port Moody, you get a separation from the downtown, which is St. John Street. The main street is St. John Street and Rocky Point or Murray Street. There's a separation because of the train tracks. What they're adding is a massive pedestrian uh, overpass that's going to allow foot traffic and bicycle traffic to go over and back and forth over from the main street to the downstreet. So they're trying to integrate the downtown with the waterfront area there. Also adding another road bridge as well. So um, if you're a younger person moving to Port Moody, the TOD or the Transit Oriented Development is definitely where you're going to want to be at. I hear they're going to be putting an SFU campus, a Whole Foods, all those kinds of things. They're restoring lost waterways. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the things I'm most excited about coming to Port Moody. In addition to the sawmill, which is the Flaville, it's the old sawmill just behind me over here. Um, to put this crazy development into perspective, the sawmill, I believe is, don't correct me, don't, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 35 acres is what the sawmill is. And Rocky Point Park itself is just 9.5 acres. So they're gonna be adding on a whole addition uh, of uh, the boardwalk here. Um, 13 towers or so is scheduled for the sawmill development and approximately 13 towers for the TOD as well. So you have like 26 towers coming to just the Rocky Point area. And that'll basically be like a mini seawall yeah, right it, there, probably in the next a, like it's decade. It's a seawall, that's exactly what it is. Okay, and then uh, I guess let's talk about affordability now. As everybody knows, BC stands for bring cash, right? It's not exactly. Uh, BC bring cash. <laughs> bring not cash. everybody knows that. Right? I didn't know. I didn't know. That's yeah, great. Bring cash. That's what they say, right? <laughs> so, cash. I mean, when you talk about affordability, in the grand scheme of things, nothing here is really affordable, right? No, no. But, you know, you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. Let's talk about, like, what can you get yourself? How much, how much for, like, a starter apartment? Oh, well, I'm proud to say uh, the most recent pre-sale that was done in Port Moody was Moody Yards, right on Murray Street here, rock, across the street from Rocky Point. And I was able to lock up the only one bedroom in the whole development in phase one for my clients. I was really excited about that. Congratulations again. And that was 480. 480. 480,000 okay. they got for a one bedroom. And that's that brand great, new. That was brand new. So you can probably get something, one beds in the like maybe mid 400s? Mid 400s, yeah, for yeah, sure. Okay. For sure. The sweet spot is around that $500,000 mark for Port right. Moody. You, you got to be right around there to, to get anything in Port Moody, essentially. Now, townhomes, I personally don't see a lot of townhomes in Port Moody. Is that the case? Like. Yeah, no, very, very small townhomes. It's very hard to find a townhome with a backyard in Port Moody or like those nice grand townhouses. You're going to be finding it uh, just by College Park. College Park, uh, Seaview area. College Park is the best townhouse. You've got nice big older, uh, big townhouses with some great spaces. There's some smaller ones in the downtown core area here, mm -hmm. but uh, the nice townhouses I found are up in the College Park area. Okay, and then detached homes. What's a starter detached home going for here? Like here? 1.2. That's 1. for 1. your like 1970s BC box. BC box, 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.2. You're not getting anything below 1.1 1. 1 in Port Moody. And, and just so you guys know, those prices were probably, what, 1.6? at one point and the, you could not get a house in port moody under 1.3 1.4 in you know at the beginning of two, well in 2021 yeah yeah for sure so this is these these 1.3 1.4 prices have dropped to 1.1 1. 1, 1. 1. 1.2 gosh gotcha. yeah okay and uh i guess let's let's get into some of the amenities man like there are tons stop 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 things. first i got i got some great ones for you so we've got brewers row have you seen the brewery the brewery district here we got yes, like yes. eight or so breweries here um rocky point itself is littered with stuff i bought a pre-sale here for my family just across the street at 50 electronic and i bought that because of the amenities for the family we have a kids water park we have a kids pool we have a parkour park the boathouse we have the pedro's fish and chips we have all these great things here for these kids and i think it's just in a oh, dog parks and stuff like that but um Rocky Point is a sweet amenities area for Port for Moody. They've, yeah, because they've got the whole brewery district, they've got Rocky Point, uh, tons of nice restaurants, upper scale restaurants, 
Um, they've got beaches. They've, they've pretty much got oh, everything. A boat launch, which, is, boat which launch. is unique. I mean, Coquitlam doesn't have a boat launch. Burnaby doesn't have a boat launch, I don't think. Port Coquitlam, I don't... No, Port Coquitlam doesn't have a boat launch. So if you have a boat, Port Moody is a, a great, great option for you, for sure. And uh, so I was looking into, like... Uh, the future growth. I know we've talked a lot about like the plan. They got the 35 acre sawmill development. That's going to be amazing. They've got literally a whole new you know, tourist city, attraction, a whole new sub area and tourist attraction attraction coming to the city soon. But I also remember reading that uh, Port Moody's population is expected to, to double. double by 2040. I think they said. So I mean, that There's right no there. There's no other city that's going to double. It, it's I. I'm trying to wrap my head around how it's going to be. But yeah, this the, the population is expected to double. Yeah, so I mean, if, if, if you want to buy in a place, lots of amenities in a beautiful area um, with mild weather, lots of stuff for the family to do, uh, lots if you're young, all the breweries and everything, that is also likely going to appreciate a ton in the next decade. I mean, this is a pretty sweet option, I would This have is to. a layup. This yeah. is a layup. It's a layup. A slam dunk, for yeah. sure. How yeah. you bought Yeah, I bought the biggest property. I bought a four bedroom and a den uh, condo. 1678, so almost 1700 square foot condo I bought for myself right across the street from Rocky Point. And I'm super excited to see that appreciate. That's a sweet condo. I remember <laughs> yeah, looking sure. at the floor plan for that one. Yeah. Well, hey, that's why Port Moody was number five search for real estate in Canada in 2021. If you want more information or for you. Again, uh, please, if you want to book a call with me, you can scroll down in the description. My calendar link is right there. You can book yourself right into the calendar and chat with me. And I can even put you in touch with Jordan, chat with either one of us, whatever it may be. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, subscribe for more.